this video, I'm going to help you create your own Zero Writer, which is a portable e-ink typewriter, kind of designed like the FreeWrite or uh, Palmera uh, devices. The idea here is to create an e-ink typewriter using a Raspberry Pi Zero and uh, a few inexpensive components. Uh, you can get up and running for about 50 bucks. And uh, let's get to it. So the first step is we're going to use the Raspberry Pi Imager tool. Um, you can find all of these steps on the GitHub uh, that I've linked uh, in the video here. Um, there's a step-by-step -step guide included in text. I'm going to go over some of the steps here in this video just to make it a bit easier. Step one is getting the Raspberry Pi imaging tool and imaging your SD card. So basically the way this works is your SD card is kind of like the brain of the computer. And here we're just going to uh, put the right stuff in there. Uh, I've tried a few different things. I'm going to recommend you use uh, a version of the Pi OS with no desktop because uh, we don't actually use any of the desktop stuff uh, on the Zero Writer. It's, it's kind of just a keyboard. So you choose Raspberry Pi OS Lite, choose your SD card, and then you're going to add some settings to it. I'm going to recommend you use the host name zerowriter.local. Use this when you're kind of setting it up and configuring it. You can set a username and password, whatever you want. And then here you want to make sure you configure your Wi-Fi, whatever your Wi-Fi network is and your password. I'm not too sure what the wireless LAN country does, but some people think it's a big deal. So maybe put your country in there. Under services, make sure SSH is on with password authentication, we need this. And the options, doesn't really matter. And double check that you got your username and password set. I realize I mistyped that, whoops. But everything else looks good. So we're gonna hit save. And we're gonna apply these settings and format the card. So like I said, um, the Zero Writer actually uses the Raspberry Pi operating system. Um, and all this does is it sets your SD card up to be the brains of your typewriter to get everything kind of in place so we can do the next steps. And uh, I've sped up this process a little bit. Uh, depending on your SD card, it might take a bit longer. And uh, you can check when it's done. You should see your SD card look something like this, bootfs, and it has a whole bunch of junk in there. Most importantly is there's this config file, which you can use if you run into problems later. But there won't be any problems because you're following this guide. Okay, so next up, uh, if we go back to our little setup guide here on the GitHub, we have done the Pi Imager. Step two, we're going to establish our connection. Okay, so this is where things get a little bit uh, geeky, um, but I promise you it's not that bad. Uh, we're just going to go through step by step, make sure we do everything in order, uh, more or less, and we'll be good to go. So I'm using Windows PowerShell here. Uh, you could use any command line tool, uh, depending on your operating system, um, whatever works for you. And I'm just gonna go ahead and type in what uh, is written down here, an SSH command, which tries to connect. The first time you connect, you're gonna get some security stuff about fingerprints or whatever. And you can just 
say yes and type in the password that you had assigned and then you'll be rewarded with this nice blinking cursor that means we're we're in and we're all set up and we move on to the next step which is actually setting up and installing all the kind of software we need to run the typewriter the good news is this is just copy paste so you're just gonna literally copy and paste what is in the, uh, the screen on the right there from GitHub, and you just paste it into the command line, press enter. It'll do all kinds of stuff in the background, install things, packages, verify stuff. And when one's done, you do the next one. I'm typing them here, but you can just use copy paste. You kind of just do them one at a time. Sometimes it'll ask you to like press yes, Y for installing. This is probably the most complicated part and it's really not that complicated. It's just kind of tedious. Depending on the speed of your SD card and some other stuff, it, this could either take a couple minutes or, or a bit longer. Um, one thing to note is make sure you use the sudo uh, command, the sudo. For some reason, Linux people uh, really like this, this thing. You have to type this to, to be the super user or something i don't really get it it's kind of weird that you have to do this command all the time what's the point in even having it if uh if everyone knows it anyway I, it's a little confusing to me but hey that's that's what we got to do to get this thing to work properly uh, sometimes if you uh run into an error uh, if you just kind of slow down I did here. I think I forgot to install the the pip library, so I just went back and installed that too. One of the nice things about working in Linux is uh, if you just kind of read what's on the screen, it's, it's really not so bad. Usually, it's uh, pretty clear what's going wrong, at least. If you're new to this command line stuff, like me, um, like I said, it's really not so bad. It just kind of looks more intimidating than it really is. It's actually kind of nice uh, to have this kind of level of control over things. Very freeing. Kind of fits for a typewriter too, right? Okay, this is the last one to look out for. For some reason, uh, this installing the keyboard library gets a little weird. Uh, you have to use this break system packages thing. So you can just copy and paste what I have in the, the walkthrough there. We're all about breaking things. Okay, and it looks like we have all of the packages good to go. Moving on to the next step. Uh, here we're actually gonna go into the Raspberry Pi config tool. So again, you just kind of copy and paste that command. You'll get a screen like this. You can mess around in here and change some other stuff, but really all we're interested in is going to interface SPI and turning this on. Uh, SPI is the uh, is what the display uses to communicate with the Raspberry Pi, so we need that one. 
And then last step, all the code is on GitHub. So we're going to install uh, the Git tool or the library. Hit yes. It'll do its thing. And this is just going to make it so we can copy all the code um, from the linked uh, GitHub uh, directly to your new typewriter. Makes it really easy. So I'm going to just paste in that command. Like I said, a lot of copy paste. You can see it's cloning the zero writer code. And now we're just going to kind of navigate to it. So the CD command, it's kind of like double clicking a folder on your desktop kind of thing. So we're just telling our Raspberry Pi to go into a bunch of folders. And I'm sorry, it's kind of buried in there because the uh, I just kind of copied the, the WaveShare setup, so you get to really get deep in there. And then finally, you're going to launch the program with that sudo python main.py, and it will try to boot. Now, you'll probably get an error here if you haven't configured the display yet, uh, so don't be too alarmed. Um, because unless it's all wired up correctly, it's not going to actually boot. You can use the command C in the uh, uh, in your terminal, or control C. I'm sorry, to uh, to close out whatever process if it gets stuck. Uh, now we're going to set up the cron tab. So we do cron tab dash E. We get into here. All crontab does is uh, when your Raspberry Pi starts up, uh, it looks here for tasks that it has to do. So what I've done here is created a little command that tells it to uh, start our typewriter program every time the computer starts. Because otherwise it'll just kind of sit there doing nothing. And then you uh, use Control O to save your uh, cron tab when you're in there. It'll install, and then you can reboot it to make sure it works. Oh, and here I'm going to go into the uh, boot config. So this is the last step here. Uh, this is optional, but this is where you can go to overclock your typewriter. Um, it's kind of a, I would recommend you do this. Um, the default settings are good, um, but I've included this file here with my recommended overclock settings. You can copy and paste them in. Uh, you'll get a little bit better performance, better latency, uh, theoretically at the cost of some battery life, but it's no big deal. You can tweak these as you, uh, as you want. Just be warned if uh, if you overclock beyond what your uh, typewriter can handle, you might get stuck uh, where it can't boot, and you'll have to do some troubleshooting there. But it's it's not such a big deal. If you do some Google searching, you'll you'll find easy answers every time. Generally speaking, you can always get to that uh, config file uh, from the SD card. So when you have problems you just kind of plug that SD card in and uh, any other computer you can get at that config and you can change those values to something uh, smaller so it boots or you can use the ones I recommended and they'll probably be okay most of the time okay so our last step here is the wiring and the soldering. So you can always 
do a Google search and figure out kind of what your soldering needs to look like. But the good news is uh, basically all you got to do is connect the dots. Um, so on your Raspberry Pi, you've got all these uh, slots, these pinouts, uh, and they're numbered. So really all you have to do is match the right number uh, to the number on your display. So this is what the e-paper pinout looks like. And that's where they have to go. So you maybe you want to pause it here, but um, basically you just have to go step by step, uh, one pin at a time, and you want to match the pin from the display to the pin on your Raspberry Pi. Um, it's a little bit tedious, but it's really not too bad. It's just a lot of counting. Um, refer to the diagrams, uh, take it slowly, just make sure you're uh, carefully connecting everything. And if you do need help with soldering the pins onto your Raspberry Pi, you can either get a pre-soldered Pi uh, Zero uh, for a couple extra bucks, or you can uh, do it yourself. There's tons of great videos to help you with the soldering. And then of course, uh, you can just connect your power supply and your keyboard and you're in business. And that's about it. So as you can see, you know, maybe 15, 20 minutes of work, um, a little bit of waiting, a whole lot of copy and paste and you'll be up and running with uh, a zero writer. It's really not that hard. Um, make some mistakes, it's no problem. Uh, can't do any real damage to it, I don't think. And yeah, if you have any questions, comments, let me know and uh, best of luck and happy writing.